Every year, thousands of books are released to the public. Back in the late 1990s, in 1998, when I published my first book, about 60,000 books were published and released that year. By 2013, it went up to 2.3 million books. And last year, in 2021, it was up to 4 million books published and released that year. So with that many books being published every single year, how do you, how does your book stand out? And the answer to that is promotion. And we're gonna talk about how you can promote your book in today's video. You have a story to tell, but you don't know where to start. Let me show you how to free your story. I teach you how to write and how to dig deep in your soul to release your story and make a difference in the world. Now, if you're a nonfiction writer, you have to write a book proposal. In my other life as a college professor, this is what I teach. One of the things that I teach is writing a proposal, a business proposal. And a book proposal is very similar to a book proposal. It's very specific to books. And when you are writing your book proposal, what you're doing is you are writing, looking at audience, you're looking at other books and comparing your book to other books. You are writing down your promotional plan. Now, if you're a fiction writer, you don't have to do that. You don't have to create a book proposal for a publisher. However, you do have to understand how you plan to promote your book. You do have to do that. Even if you are traditionally published, you need to know what your plan is. How are you going to promote this book and how are you going to let your audience know that the book is available and that they want to read? So let's begin with my first suggestion. My first suggestion is don't try to target everyone. So your book may be amazing and it may you may want to everybody to read it. However, what you want to do is you want to target just the audience that you think can really enjoy or benefit from your book. So start small, start with the readership that you think would most like your book. And that's where you're going to target your promotion. Uh, I would even start uh, geographically small. So start within your own state, within your own county, within your own city, because there are plenty of readers within your own city who would be interested in your book. So get those people interested first, do a lot of promotion locally, expand out as you kind of exhaust your local market. Now that doesn't mean that you don't want to expand out or have ads or have promotion nationwide if you wanted to. Sure you can, but start geographically small and grow out. Also what you want to do is you want to target the group within your group. So let's say you are writing romances. So that's where I started was romance. Well what type of romance did I write? I didn't write romantic suspense. I didn't write uh, thrillers, right? I wrote contemporary romances and I can narrow it down even more. I wrote Latino romances. So with Latino characters focused on the Latino audience. Does that mean that other people couldn't read it also? Of course not. But I did have have a focus to start with, right? So that was the audience that I wanted to target first because I knew that they would be the most interested in my book. So it's not that people that read, let's say, romantic comedies uh, are going to read one book that year and that's it. If they love romantic comedies, they're going to read as many as they can find. So you, uh, you're you not saying, well, if I, if I only target this, you know, they, that there's already people writing that. Well, great. That means that there's an audience for that and that's the audience that you want to target. Okay, so what's the second thing you're going to do? So let's say that I've convinced you and you're willing to start geographically local, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna contact your local media. Write a press release. If you don't know how to write a press release, learn how to write a press release, unless you can hire somebody else to do it for you. Uh, most of us that are starting out, they we, we don't have the ability to hire a lot of people, so we have to learn how to do a lot of these things by ourselves. So I learned how to write a press release when I first started writing because I wanted to be able to send it out. And um, so once you do that, you want to focus on what you want to say in the press release. It has to be short and it has to have some kind of angle. What is your book about? What is the angle that you can use? So sometimes it's brand new author, right? You can say, well, I'm a, I'm a local new author and that might be an angle or interesting to little local papers or local radio stations or you know, call if you're in a college town, maybe your, your college um, that you went to. 
might be interested, right? So, and they have their newsletters and they have their radio stations. They have their own local media as well. So you want to contact them. Uh, the other, you know, you could have other angles as well, depending on what the story is about or what your book is about, if it's not a nonfiction book. But you want to contact them. And in the press release, you want to enter the five W's and the H. So who, what, where, when, why, and how. So tell them who you are, what your book is about, why they're, they should be interested, why readers should be interested. Answer all those questions that they're going to want to know. Also where your book is going to be available, how they can get a hold of you, all of those questions that they're going, that, that are necessary, right, for them to be able to eat, want to call you, if they want to interview you, contact you, and share information. Because what, what you put on the press release is really going to help them when they start to write an article about you or when they start to create interview questions for you. Other places to promote or other places that you can contact are organizations that have some kind of tie-in to your book. So depending on what the subject of your book is, there could be organizations that deal with that. So there may be I don't, I'll give you an example from one of my books. So I uh, wrote a book where there was a little boy that was adopted eventually by, at the, by the end of the novel by a couple in a romance novel. Um, so one of the things that I thought, I'm also uh, a mom of two adopted children. So I have some uh, information about that. I have some knowledge. I also have a lot of interest in adoption. So one thing I could have done, I didn't really, I thought about it and I, and I uh, looked into it a little bit and I ultimately decided not to do this, but I could have, is contacted adoption agencies and see if they wanted me to come and be a guest speaker. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't do it, by the way, is I just did not really want to tie my personal life to my book that that closely. So I just decided not to do that. But I could have. I could have contacted them. I could have uh, gone to uh, speak. I could have um, possibly sold some books there at least, uh, had people be interested enough to look at my book, look for my books, find out who I was. Uh, again, I decided not to just because it was just a little too personal. I decided I did not want to do that. So don't discount organizations. Look them up. They can be government organizations. They can be just local nonprofit organizations. But definitely look into those because those are great. And a lot of times they're looking for speakers that are going to be able to come and entertain them and speak for free, uh, which is something that you can choose to do or you can charge. Usually, of course, you're going to get more uh, interest if you're speaking for free than if you are charging. But if, you know, if you, um, depending on the organization, if they're willing to have people, you know, if they're willing to pay to have a speaker, then that might be to your benefit as well. You can get a little money for going to speak. Another group are booksellers and librarians that you can contact. Now, when I started out, uh, again, there it was a book. It seemed like everybody was writing a book, and there were bookstores everywhere. There were independent bookstores. There was Barnes and Noble. There were board. There was Borders. There was Walden Books. There was oh my gosh, there were so many of them. Crown Books. There were just tons of bookstores everywhere uh, because Amazon didn't own everything yet. So. It was nice to be able to contact all these booksellers and they were usually willing to have authors come in. Uh, as a lot of the bookstores started to disappear and it, it became, you know, the big two really became Borders and Barnes and Noble, it, it got a little more difficult to try to be able to get in there because they they would, uh, you know, get best-selling authors coming in, celebrity authors, and it was harder to get in there. However, they still, you know, especially local, book, any, locally I never had problems getting in and doing a book signing and or maybe some kind of book event. So, but now I think it's it's turned around so much that there uh, there are independent bookstores coming back, and there is of course still Barnes and Noble, uh, but I think they're more willing to have writers come in now because they don't get as many. They don't get as many people. Everybody focuses on social media. Everybody focuses on Amazon and and digital content, and so I think it's a lot better to get into bookstores. So don't discount booksellers librarians who are always interested in having writers come in, uh, do some kind of presentation, uh, and again, help bring people into the bookstores and into the library. Another way to promote your book is to get reviews. So asking people to review your book, asking people that have read your book to go to all the online medias and leave a review. Good reviews obviously help a lot because people go and they see that other people like it and they leave a positive review. 
Negative reviews can help as well because sometimes it just creates that curiosity. People who have gotten terrible, terrible, terrible reviews and a lot of them will have people go and just read the book because they want to know how terrible it really was. So sometimes bad reviews can help. Of course, you want the good reviews, right? So uh, encourage people that like your book to please go and leave a review because it helps uh, It helps promote your book. Okay, another way to promote your book is to actually write more. And I'm not talking about writing more books, although that does help because the more books you have out there, the more, you know, the more people you might be able to uh, connect with and more people might find out about you. But uh, what I'm talking about is writing more of other things. So you want to write maybe blogs, um, online journals, uh, social media, okay? So the more you are writing, the more you're creating um, for other people, and it doesn't have to be things like this, right? It doesn't have to be where you're giving writing advice, although that's the kind of the first thing that authors think about. It's kind of the first thing I thought about, and I thought, and, and for many years I'm like, I have nothing to say. I, I don't really want to say, I don't really have any advice to give uh, for years and years and years, and I thought, you know, there's so many other people doing that. Uh, I finally did decide to do this only because this is what I do. I already teach. I'm already a college instructor. I already teach writing, and I'm already a writer, so I finally decided, well, that I am going to do this. So as I'm sitting around in 2020 figuring out what uh, to do while we're all stick, stuck inside, I decided Said, hey, you know what? I think I am going to go ahead and uh, start sharing what I know. So this is why I'm doing it. But there are other things that you can do. You don't have to write about writing. You can write about your novels. You can write about the, the, the subjects that you tend to write about. So most writers have themes that they like. They have subject matters that they come to. Maybe they're experts in hiking, and so they tend to put hiking type stuff in their novels. Uh, so write about that because you're going to get people that are enthusiasts you know, hiking enthusiasts, swimming enthusiasts, whatever it is that you like, and they're going to be attracted to those articles and that might bring them into your novels. So what you're trying to do is just have more stuff out there, more writing. And I know you're probably saying, well, more writing. I'm already writing my novel. I totally get that because that's the way I feel. It's like more, I don't even know how I'm going to have time to write more, to write more blogs. But, you know, you find the time, you schedule it, you, 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 don't, you can have to be consistent and regular, but it doesn't have to be every single day. I started out challenging myself that I wanted to write a blog every single day for about a year. And I did, I did almost, I did pretty good. I think I did maybe, I think I got close to 300. So you know, not bad. I missed a few days. But that, then afterwards, I realized that, no, if I really want to continue to write novels, I really can't write a blog every single day. So I write one almost every other day now, uh, which, again, it does help. And uh, at this point, like I said, I'm writing about writing. And at uh, some other time, I may decide to start writing about something different. Once I think I've shared everything I have to share about writing, I may move on to writing about something else, but I will continue to do that. Writing on social media also because, again, you're attracting it's kind of that short writing that you're attracting your readers. So think about writing more in order to attract more and different readers. Now, before I go on to the next step, I am going to ask you to please hit that like button if you are enjoying this video, if it's helpful, uh, because I always do leave this for the end. And one of the things you do want to do when you are promoting is to remind people to like your videos, to like your blogs and all of that. So if you are getting uh, any kind of value from this video, please hit that like button. Okay, the next thing then is let's talk about social media. So you're writing things for blogs or journals or other larger things, articles, then there is social media, right? And social media, oh, you know, I, I, you might know how I feel about that. I don't really love social media. I, I do think that it's, it's a huge waste of time, but it is also beneficial to writers because we do get to connect with people that like books. We do get to connect with other writers and all of that helps you to be able to promote your book. So you do want to be on social media, but what you want to do is you want to stay on topic. So what does does that mean? Uh, you can share other stuff. I share a lot of stuff. I share things about my dogs because I love my dogs. I share things about my life, places I go, sometimes food, not so much, but sometimes. But 
what you really want to do is you really want to stay on topic. And by on topic, what I mean is what is it that you are writing about? It's not just your book. You definitely want to talk about your book, but you also want to talk about topics that are within your book that you're interested in. So when you're researching something about that's going to go in your book, when you are talking about any kind of uh, what, what, location uh, or just a certain topic. Maybe you're, you're writing a cowboy uh, story. Maybe there's information about horses and why you like horses and or why you like a certain location. Again, so you want to talk about that in your social media because you're going to probably interest the people that are already there that like you and maybe get some new people who are interested in that topic as well. So stay positive on social media. That's another thing. Uh, I, I, I get very annoyed when people start com to complain about certain things. I don't know if I'm the only one that does. I don't think so. Um, but I just kind of scroll past that. I don't really care about people complaining about things that they don't like. <laughs> it's like, that's, that just, it brings everybody down. It brings down social media. Uh, and so I'm not there for that. Uh, and if you're a writer, you're not there for that. You're there to entertain your readers. You're there to share your information. You're there to talk about your books. You're not there to complain about other things that are going on in the outside world. It's probably best just to leave that out there. Okay, so promotion does not have to be terrifying. It doesn't have to take up a lot of time. Uh, it does have to take some of your time and it's part of your job as well. It's not just writing the book. Unfortunately, it's also talking about your book, promoting your book, letting people know that your book is there. Uh, because again, you have those four million other books. Now, the good thing is, of course, that those four mil million other books aren't all in the same genre as what you're writing. So it does help, right, to have that, that target market to narrow it down to exactly who likes your book, like we started up talking about. Um, but there are a lot of books out there and so you do need to do some promotion. It can be enjoyable. Uh, I do have fun when I talk to people out in, in um, the real world and also in the social media world. So do take some time out of your busy day to do a little promotion so that you can keep your readers entertained, keep your readers uh, coming back to you and also maybe make some new readers and have some fun. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like and the share button and come back and see me next Friday for some more writing tips.